So I have this device. It's called Nagon Lite 2. It's a little single board hobby computer and I'm going to see if I can make some games for it. Writing them from scratch using C. It's going to be a whole video series. I'll try and do one video on this a month or I'll give up and never mention it ever again. We shall see. The Aegon is a bit similar to this other device I've got here called an RC2014 which I've done videos on. It's also a little hobby computer. And then there's this piece of hardware which I've also done videos about which is a Spectrum Next. I might have a bit of a problem collecting these things really. They all have one thing in common. They all have some variant of a Z80 CPU inside them. The RC2014 has a real Z80, just here on this little card. The Spectrum Next has a Z80N inside this FPGA. The Aegon has an EZ80, which is a modern day CPU that's still made. And it has some really useful features that none of the other Z80s I possess have. I'm not going to go through the Aegon's features now. We'll get to that when it's appropriate in future videos. The Z80 is an 8-bit CPU. That means it's got an 8-bit data bus and a 16-bit address bus, which gives access to 64K of memory at any one time. That was acceptable 40 years ago, but today it's just a pain in the ass. Sure, you can write handcrafted assembly to artfully use every single byte of RAM or make use of complex and mind-bending bank switching techniques to access more RAM, but it still only ever arrives in chunks of up to 64K. The EZ80 inside the Aegon has a 24-bit addressing mode though, allowing access of up to 16 megabytes of RAM on an 8-bit CPU. The Aegon doesn't have that much, it just has 512K of RAM, which is tons. My Atari ST had that much at the start and it could run an entire user interface and real software. In the spirit of sharing and encouraging others to take the lid off their computers and poke around, I've set up a GitHub repo with code in it that I've been writing. So if you're kind of inclined, you can see what I'm doing and you can steal some of the ideas. I'm also writing a more detailed technical post on my blog and website that explains all this because going through some of this in a video form is just the wrong way of doing it. Words on a screen is much better. But here's a bit of an overview of what I've done. 512k of RAM and a 20 megahertz CPU is more than enough for a decent programming environment because there's also a C compiler. After collecting random Z80 based computers, writing code in C on them is my next favourite activity. And no, it's not Z88DK for once. It's a version of LLVM originally designed to work with Texas Instrument calculators. LLVM is the compiler toolchain that everyone uses now. It's a big system with many, many rabbit holes. And I fell down one by mistake for an entire weekend. You see, the Aegon Lite is really just an EZ80. Some RAM and then an ESP32 attached via the EZ80's UART port. That's it. And it seems at that level, it's close enough to a Texas Instruments 84 plus calculator that the compiler just works. All it needs is some specific Aegon code adding, via some assembly and some include files. It's not that hard to modify the compiler either. You see, I wanted to add access to the low level keyboard routines because they weren't available at the time. And it's a common feature in embedded systems that to do things like this, all you're really doing is talking to some hardware ports or registers in the device. In C, you can't really do that because you either need some sort of magic compiler voodoo that glues this together for you behind the scenes, or you need to write your own assembly routines and call them from C. Because really all this stuff is designed to be talked to using assembly. The first way is far too much effort because who knows what's happening inside the compiler. We really don't know what's going on in there unless we've written it ourselves, and I'm not writing compilers. But the second way of just writing your own assembly can be done in an hour or two, even if you have no idea what you're doing, because there's examples in there that you can see and copy. And that's what I did. The end result was that, with minimal effort, I could add extra features to the C runtime myself. It wasn't like I just hit a wall in the C implementation trying to trace things through, and ended up with some external C function that was really just part of the compiler. But for now I've got a working C compiler, which is half the battle. The other half is getting this code into the device to run it. All I wanted to do at the start was get some code compiling and put it into the Aegon to check things work. A basic kind of hello world type thing. But it's important to me that the time between typing in the code, compiling it and seeing the end result is as short as possible. I want that fast iteration time. I have literally no interest in copying data to memory cards, ejecting the memory cards, putting them inside the hardware, starting the hardware, waiting for it to boot, and I'm bored already. You think the TikTok generation have got no patience? 
yeah. So to speed this up, I'm actually using an emulator, since I can script that from within inside a make file. And the emulator's pretty good. It emulates the EZ80 CPU, but then all the code that runs on the ESP is just run natively on my computer. So it's not emulating the ESP as well. And I've now got this whole little dev kit set up that's nicely customized for me and how I like to work. The idea then is that once I have an actual playable piece of code, rather than test code and broken ideas, I can copy that to an SD card and run it properly. But for general development, I can literally just type make and the emulator opens up for me and it's all done behind the scenes. I might also have gone down a rabbit hole by installing NeoVim instead of my usual Visual Studio code. Once you learn it's half dozen cryptic commands and you've spent the past 25 years of your life using Vi, it's quite a usable code editor. In fact, I might have done the questionable thing of removing Windows from my Surface Pro, installing Linux Mint on it, and setting that up as my little Aegon Lite development environment. I'm trying to make it as easy as possible to write and test code. I don't always want to sit at a desk with my main PC booted up just to do some coding. I might want to do this while watching TV or whatever. So it's important I've got something that's quite accessible. Writing code for the Aegon is quite easy really, assuming you know C. So I've made a template project, which is really just a modified copy of one that's supplied with the compiler. It lets me build a working test program pretty quickly, and it has surprisingly little amount of boilerplate code, beyond the stuff that I've added to it. I just need to write some fairly standard looking C, then I can compile it, and that makes the binary. My make file can then copy this into the fake SD card the emulator uses and then run the emulator for me. The emulator and the system in general looks for an autoexec file, which I've made the make file create for me so that it runs whatever program I've just compiled. So the general routine is to write my code, tell NeoVim to run make, which will compile it. If there's any errors, I can fix them. And then I can run make again and it will run the emulator for me. So there you go, that's how I've set up a development environment for the Aegon. Next time I'll be digging around into how this machine draws graphics. It's pretty weird, but it's also quite clever, and it involved me being lazy and asking ChatGPT to write some Python programs for me to help convert graphic formats. You see, my general aim this year is one video every two weeks. I'm also focusing on more technical videos with a bit of programming, or some hardware and electronic stuff, or my computer science content generally want to get things finished and not have them sat around for weeks as I get confused and lost down tiny rabbit holes that I could just avoid. I had a bit of an enforced holiday during December after having the flu, which sucked, which then turned into a chest infection, which sucked even more. And then some other rubbish afterwards because clearly I wasn't done being ill. Lying around the house at 3am with nothing to do but cough my innards out so much that I could see stars gave me plenty of time to think about what I wanted to do here and also that I have to make it somehow sustainable. So yeah, come back in two weeks for another video. It won't be an Aegon video, I need to write some code first and figure out how it works, and that takes quite a bit of time. But whatever it is, it will be interesting, so I'll see you later.